outfits and the shaft or if I'm stuck in town, wait for the shaft to heat up. Um, I'm not just sitting in the car the whole time waiting. So what I want to, I want to go over, uh, I did try to do this video earlier and as usual, some things get chaotic with the, with the signal thing and I start getting a little frustrated and kind of get sounding abrasive. It's not to be abrasive, annoyed with anything. It's, uh, well, yeah, I'm annoyed by the phone, um, all the phone stuff, but that's just part of life, I guess. Uh, we're going to go over some techniques here. Um, this is, this is my saw handling. Basically, you're seeing my saw handling skills here. Um, pretty much, you can do all this with a piece of paper, a pen, uh, a coffee cup, a salt shaker. Um, as so I have a little friend here, I keep him with me uh that's a stone carving that i've i've worked on for years i love this stone carving i want to show it off um just worked on it for years see his eye everything there's something about him i don't think i could ever get rid of it uh of course it's on etsy right now but i put a lot of money on it because i don't ever really want to sell it um should anybody happen to buy it, I might actually talk them into accepting a refund. There's a few of those around. You know, try keeping your art. That's the most important thing. Some things you want to keep around. Some things, uh, some pieces you just want to keep within, around your presence. Because they inspire you every day that you look at them. That's what you will find as you keep doing this. There are some things you just have a hard time letting go of. Um, so these are simple techniques, really. Um, it all starts with making a line with a pen, right? You can do you can do lots of lines. You can do lots of practice. You see, I'm not making a straight line. I'm not just going eh, there. I'm done. Uh, there I'm done. You see, you see the difference. If you, and this is how I carve too. When you watch my videos, I don't, I don't just go in and hold the saw and do that. I'm going, gee, 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 gee. you know, working that, doing the same thing, keeping the depth. I'm, I'm watching on the, you know, here's your tip of your bar, and then you have your chain. You know, here's all your teeth on your chain, say. I'm watching the lines. I'm watching the line of the chain, and I'm watching the line of the tip of the bar. And when I'm cutting, you know, it's like you're kind of in that transverse. Like, I'm seeing within the cut. I'm, I'm using that x-ray vision thing, right? That comes with practice. That comes with... Um, just a lot of time you know you can even make make marks on your bars and your chains like i have i've had bars where i put an x at the tip like that like i take a take a belt sander and put an x like that and it gives me a depth finder gives me an idea of depth also you can take that same belt sander and just just make little grooves in your bar little lines you can measure you can have inches you can have every three inches you can have every four me personally i prefer not to measure i just go whoop whoop you know like i divide the bar up as i'm looking at it how it sits on the saw um they don't have to be perfectly measured out it's it's reference points some bars have a hole in the middle of them you've seen those some bars have this delight hardening tip very apparent those are all things that you can use as points of reference for depth as you're cutting that will come with time that will come with a lot of practice observation material off of the rest of the carving right and at that depth and then if i have to go deeper 
in the next section you know say i'm doing a round circle so i'm i'm just removing pieces and like you know like everything around it i'm just removing these little bits i'm not removing massive amounts like with a circle out of a square block you know like i'm just removing that corner i went through that i did that ball carving video um so that's that that's that's a uh, visual approach okay so a lot of it is visual but a lot of it too is is your touch the best way to get your touch down this is i did this for years i have drawing books full i mean absolutely full i have stacks of drawing books like stacks not just one or two Literally, this is from the age of 12, 13 years old till now, uh, over 40, I'll just say that, <laughs> you know, um, of just this thing here. And anybody can do this. It starts, it starts with the difference. You see, I did a heavy one, right? Most people, when they use a big pen, if I say just... Just scribble me, scribble me a spot, like make me, make me a square with a big pen, right? Okay, so, and this is a really neat square, right? Most people, I don't even know how far most people would go, right? And I'll say, okay, you got, you got 30 seconds, go, or you got a minute, go, or I'll say you have 10 minutes, go, and people's 10 minutes. What do I need 10 minutes to make a box for? Well, it's up to you. You can either spend that 10, that entire 10 minutes on that box. Or you can make a quick box and then sit for the rest of the 10 minutes and play on your phone. Um, now, there's a difference between this is like normal pressure that, that most of us use a big pen at. Right. This is like if I'm going to write my name. Even I write my name a little bit light. Right. Most people, their their pen skills with a big pen. Most people's are heavier than that. And see, big pen. Look at this. You see the difference? Like, see how cool that was? I just did that. The pen let me do that. It's like a pencil, but it's a pen. It's ink. It's it's the one thing, these cheap pens, I love them for learning. It's a great learning tool because you can do that right there. Now, so take that box. Do the same box. Make it lighter. And I'm telling you guys, this is, you know, since I was a kid in high school, I was doing this stuff. And... That's where my saw skills derive from now, right? So that box is lighter than that box. So now, and this this was the games that I used to play because I was a lonely kid. I didn't have a lot of friends until they started seeing my artwork and telling me that I was an artist. I didn't even think I was an artist. I just... I like doing this stuff. I mean, of course, yeah, I, but I made big ones. I made little ones. Like, I had these huge murals that was all big pen, and they would take me years to do. And they had all kinds of stuff in them. They had, you know, big bubbles or ball or, um, some kind of technique going on where I was just going through and I was doing these technique things, you know, and, and it's, it starts off. Yeah. We keep losing a uh, signal. I'm sorry if I get distracted or babble, but this basket weave pattern is very simple. It's very simple start. To good things now you can do that basket weave pattern you can do it 
darker or lighter and I'm going to show you something here you can do it bigger or smaller so if we start out bigger right and this is this is drawing 101 and these are very simple techniques and see as we're going smaller and tighter we're we're bringing it in we're almost you know, they, they call it foreshortening because you're bigger here and you're smaller here on the edge. It's further away. Like if you were to put a dot here and a dot here, right? Take any circle, put a dot here in the middle, and then put a dot here, right? We're doing that kind of thing. That's simple drawing 101. Anybody can do that. Even if you can't draw, don't worry about anything else. Just do circles. How am I doing circles? Here again. If you can't draw, I can't draw a circle. There's so many things out there in the world that we can use to trace a circle. What's the point in trying to sit and draw a circle besides control right if i'm trying to draw a circle and learning control i go slow and i go light and that's why i love these big pens and and here i did a pretty decent circle you're and and that was a freehand circle and this is a guy who's been drawing circles for pretty much his whole life <laughs> I mean, like I said, I have drawing books full, just full of circles and globes and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any of that stuff available. Um, it's all in storage because I have spent the past year setting up a new life for myself. Um, and things are going great. I love being here on YouTube with all you guys. So, oh, sorry, I dropped my pen. Where did it go? Sorry, I don't have my phone holder. Stupidly, I should get here in my apartment so I can do more live streams for you guys from here um, on drawing. Because I don't really draw at the shop much. It's cold and dirty there. Now, there's another circle. So, so find yourself something to make a circle. Make it easy on yourself. You got a nice clean circle. Um, and there's where control comes into play too, because as I trace that circle, say, say I'm gonna trace another circle and I want it to be really faint. So if I hold the pen, the more delicately I hold that pen, and the more upright I hold the pen, the more at angle with things I hold the pen, the lighter line I can get cleaner. And I'm just going, and this takes practice. Now, I will sit all day practicing these things on one of my days off if I ever get a day. This is my time off. And here I am giving it to you guys on video. Um, because I'm taking time to practice. I'm taking time to get back in touch. And the, the thing about these Bic pens is you can roll them. Roll them and keep the tip clean. The cleaner your tip of your pen is, the easier time you're going to have. See, I can control that almost 100 percent when i get that if you do a lot of this there's different because big pen is a mechanical thing a saw chainsaw is a mechanical thing um you're touching metal to wood here as you are when you're carving you know paper comes from wood pen has a metal tip same same thing same principles Metal to wood. It's all metal to wood. Um, you know, it's just that it's it's the training. I mean, you can do it with a pencil. You can do it with crayons.
But, and this is where I say, you know, make your own decisions. Um, I like the pen to the paper because these are cheap, easy to find anywhere. Easy to keep. If you keep a bunch of crayons in the glove box in the car and they get heated up, that could get really messy. You can keep big pens in the glove box of the car with a notebook. And if you're ever stuck in your car for any reason, if I get pulled over by a cop for a headlight out, it's going to take him half an hour to run my license here and in the state I'm in. They just do that. Um, and then they might want to check you out for all other things, too, because that's what they're doing. They're trying to find a reason to ticket you. So if you're sitting there, I'll pull out a drawing book and a pen and start making circles. If I'm sitting there trying to, you know, if I'm not, you know, not freaking out because I'm trying to get somewhere. If I get pulled over for speeding, I'm pretty much, you know, yeah, it was my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> Give me the ticket and let me go. Um, and I, I, I lose my train of thought. Um, so we have our circles that we made, right? And here we were working on, we were working on this thing, right? Foreshortening. Even as you make those lines, start to fan them out a little bit and make them narrower. And it's really easy. This is really easy stuff. You know, if you work in an office and you're thinking about carving all day, you work in an office or if you work as a, a telemarketer or whatever you have to do if if you're in a situation where you can sit and scribble on a piece of paper you know try these things you know and go the other way with it boom boom if you're sitting in a doctor's office waiting for some bad news my drawing books have always been there for me um I know there's some times where you're just too stressed out and too worried about everything to draw. But drawing time is the one time that that I actually have felt centered in my life and, and like got re-centered on a lot of stuff. So these are simple. I traced traced that circle with you know with the help of a nice cup of coffee. And I started here making these things, and then boom, I went there from there. And I mean, you could cover this whole ball with them. I would go this way with the same thing, and then I would go in the in the between. I'd dissect it, you know, or I'd go random. I'd start going random with it. These are things that anybody can do with time and patience and practice. It's not. It's not a no. I can't draw. This isn't. This has nothing to do with drawing anything, really. This is patterns, okay? You're using you're using marks that the pen makes, right? You can do that. Anybody can do that. Make me three, four lines. Start there. Then make me three, four lines the other way, you know? Then three, four lines the other way below that. Then three, four lines the other way below that. Maybe two here. Maybe six over here. You know, then stack them up. It's simple. Anybody can do this stuff. You know, it's like if you've had kids and you have to teach your kids how to tie their shoe or how to ride their bike. Go back to that time. If you think you can't draw, um, go back to where you learned because or where you taught. Where you taught. That can go really light. And really thin lines until it almost disappears. You know, that kind of thing. Hardest thing I have, hardest time I have in drawing is placement, where to place things. You know, like that was wrong for me. It's not wrong, wrong. It's just the wrong direction. Um, and here's darker to lighter so this would be nearer and this would be further away right that's drawing 101 that's the basic very basic 
understanding. We all can understand that easily. I just told you that, you know, in five seconds, you got it. You understand it. It looks right. It sounds right. Now, here, to make the actual shape is the opposite of this, right? Because this is surface. If this were on the surface, as this goes further away over the horizon, it would get lighter. But with shadow as an actual shape, the shadow on the edge of that surface, like the mountains, it's like the hills versus the houses, right? If you have a whole bunch of houses going going from here to here off into the hills, the houses out here are smaller and lighter colored than the houses here. They're lighter in tone um, because they're getting hazed over, right? We all, we all know haze when you look over the surface, but the mountains would be darker because the mountains are your actual ground and your surface. Um, they would be more obscured they might be a lighter color than the ones in front of you. They're not as sharp. Um, the details are not as sharp. Anyway, back to technique. We did our circles, right? And now, now I want to fill a circle in. So my goal here, and this is messy because I'm just, drawing and showing you stuff that I have done in the when I was trying to make the other video. So our goal here is to try to do something like this, something like this. We're going to take that ball, keep your pen really light. You see, I'm even holding it kind of funny. And this is saw. Now we're doing this, <clears throat> we're doing this in reference of chainsaw operation and you want to think that way so when I'm handling that saw I'm kind of tuning my grip and tuning my hands and tuning my fingers to do the same thing that I'm doing here with the pen because if I pull the pen the wrong direction and I say wrong, it's not wrong, it's not a bad thing, it's just wrong in the sense that it might leave a stray mark like that, like, and it'll be faint, you know. But what you want to do, you see here, gradient, our goal is to have smoother People will look at my drawings and go, that's pen and ink? It looks like pencil or it looks like you painted it. You say, yeah, well, it's, it's simple. There's a lot of us out there who do big pen art and we love it. And this is where it starts. And that's where I say I'm not as much an artist as I'm into the technical thing. Like I get really, t I take one tool and I do lots of things with it. Just like a chainsaw, I operate that chainsaw like it's a pen for me or like it's a paintbrush. Um, and see, we filled this in nicely. Then you can go and just add more. And it's the same amount of pressure. It's the same thing. I'm mostly going in it starts here, that line, that one little line, that amount of pressure that I put to get that one line does all this for me. And it's not an artistic thing because here we followed an arc, right? We made an arc or a circle within a circle visually and we darkened around it. That makes it look kind of like a ball. And then as we put more darkness toward the edge, it becomes to look more like a ball. Anybody can do that. I didn't draw the circle. I didn't do anything except sit here and do this. 
right? You saw that here. We went to this, same thing. It's the same amount, just put it in different places, right? We, we had fun here with pattern stuff. I went over some, and this is more, now it's more advanced, but you're still, you're still just learning basic stuff, right? Like I did here, this is a pattern. Make a bunch of little boxes, alternating. This is good practice too. Just make those tails stick out a little bit further. And it is, it's all, it's a helix. It's this, you know, that, and that. It's just a helix. It's a box. You know, an MC Escher used that. It's, if you look at a helix from the top, that's what you see. He used that a lot in a lot of his artwork and his prints and his drawings, right? So now we have those four, and you can do a lot of things there too. You can just do this, bring that diagonal in a little bit. If you were to bring the diagonal in a little bit, then you have, you know, you're making your own, you're making your own shapes and judgments here of things. Um, and he would do this sort of thing where here you have a diagonal. Then he would go like this. You know, I'd do something like that. And then you'd have a, another line here. And then you're building off of all these other things. So then he has like overlapping boxes. You know, it's kind of like that triangle. If I can remember the triangle properly. Start with a triangle. Then make all your tails off of that triangle. And just follow it around systematically. Now keep this one open. Bring it back over and close it. Same thing here. Keep this one open. Bring it back over. And close it. Keep this one open. Bring it back over and close it. And there. And then you can even shade it in. You see here, I'm using heavy pen technique because I'm holding the phone while I'm drawing. But the thing to do is try to concentrate and focus on your technique, how you handle that pen. But see, that's easy stuff. You can do this. You can do that. You can do that. You can do that. It's practice. You have to sit. And it starts here. Make your line. Stop. Now take that same line and take it all the way across. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, you can stop at some point now. You've done enough just there. That's one thing that they told me. Um... I knew how to climb. I knew my ropes. I knew some rope stuff before that, but I was pretty confused on it because I had taught myself. I was 100% self-taught before I went to aerial rigging school, like actual academy to learn, you know, the, the certified stuff. Um, the one thing that I got out of that whole course was the instructor taught us how to learn, how to train our mind. And he said, it's all, it's all uh, mechanics. You're training your mechanics. This is what we're doing here. We're training our mechanics, our, our uh, hand coordination. And the way you do that is for eight weeks. You practice just that right there. 
for an hour a day. And I can guarantee you by the end of that eight weeks, and, and if you just do a whole bunch of them, one right after the other, and just sit there for an hour, watch a movie, put a movie on, doesn't matter, day or night, morning or evening, if you do 10 minutes and walk away, come back to it. Make sure you put that hour in every day, 60 minutes a day. You can do six sets of 10 minutes. You can do it all in an hour. Um, you can do different variations. You don't have to do just that box. If you're, if you're comfortable with this, go this route. Do this. Start with this. Everyone, start with a fresh circle for an hour. Fill that circle in for an hour like this. Spend an hour just doing this. And it, this is going to train your motor skills, your motor mechanics. When you're operating that saw. It's going to train you to have a very light touch you're, because you're learning to hold this pen up because you don't want the pen getting this dark. Right, you're trying to you're trying to do something different. You don't want this or this. You want this. Very simple. I hope whoever's watching, I see you there. Um, I hope that you're trying this as you follow along. That's why I'm going slow. This is a non-edited video. Um, it's a live feed. I'm doing this because I've been talking to a friend of mine um, about a technique that is purely based off of handling skill, um, handling ability. You're handling the level at which you handle your saw has everything to do with getting this technique figured out and it, it, it could be anything and it, it's it's kind of fun doing this helping him with it because i can't actually be there um to see how he's handling the saw uh i mean i could eat, i could watch videos of him carving and give him little pointers here and there but i can't if i'm not there in person and hearing and seeing everything, I can't actually tell exactly where we would need, like I can't instantly point out where we would need to correct things to make it, you know, to make it click for him. Um, and like I said, it's time to a lot of practice your handling skill and see here, this is my hour. I'm darkening where they where they converge. I'm darkening, just making one spot a little darker than the other. To me, this is the stuff that I want to hang on my wall when it's done because I like looking at it. It, it makes sense to me. It's not anything. It's just to me, it's art. It's somebody sitting down, taking the time to make something look nice. I like art that looks nice. That's that's art to me. Art that makes life better. I'm not all into that meaningful art. I mean, I do. I like some of the I like some of the crazy paintings that these guys are doing. Like the lowbrow. I'm into the lowbrow scene. I like picture, you know realism photo realism but kind of where they mix it with cartoon stuff and it can be fun i've tried that but i don't have the imagination for it uh like mark Ryden, todd shore those guys flow uh robert williams that whole the thrasher juxtapose scene i'm into following that scene but i've never you know i've never even come close to the kind of artwork or ideas that those guys come up with. 
So I don't consider myself an artist that way. Uh, but as you see, this is all technique. This is, like I said, my hour. So that's what you want to do. An hour a day. Every day. For weeks. Put the time in. Practice your technique. Teach yourself to draw. And, I mean, this is simple stuff. I just gave you two, two maybe three things that you can work on. You know, it's like these little square things here. I just filled them with circles to make a pattern. That's part of your hour. And, and you're doing... The only things that you want to work on in that hour, cleaning your tip of your pen. You see how goobity that was. I just cleaned it off, cleaning the tip of the pen and doing lighter and darker covering techniques. And I can guarantee you, if you guys really do this honestly, this is going to hugely improve your chainsaw carving. I mean immensely because this is this is what I've been doing with big pens since I was a kid. And when I'm carving, I think in the same way that I was those when I was 13 years old and that's you know that's where you could say you could teach a 13 year old to do chainsaw carvings. Um, because you can teach a 13-year-old to do this and enjoy it and be really good at it. Um, it's all in practice. It's not, it's not something special. It's a matter of how much time and effort you put in. So we clean our tip, right, and we practice our fill. You're just doing fill. You're just making that making that pen look like a pencil. That's how we're doing. Light handling. There's no secret to this. It's just practice. Anybody can do this. So, yeah, this is really going to help, and we're getting about at the end of the video. It's not quite an hour, but I'm telling you, this is my hour. And I don't put enough of this time in every week anymore. And you should, you should, you know, if you really want to be good, if you're really cranking and you want things, if you want to smooth things out in your carving, um, if you're having a hard time with stuff, even after you've been carving for years and you think you got it all down, if you're having a hard time, take some time to sit and scribble you know these i do a lot of work that right now does involve the use of phone apps um facebook to me is like well are getting cooped up and they're just starting to get nasty to each other again like back in the 90s or <laughs> back in the early 2000s when all that social media came out you had your we call them flamers and trolls. And so I'm I'm getting to the point I don't even want to talk to people on there anymore. I don't I don't want any part of it. I just I want escape. So this is a good way to turn that phone off. And I spend so much time editing videos lately. You guys saw the owl vid. Um I'm working on that often. Uh, like I said, using the phone, a lot of apps that I use to make my money right now because I'm not working uh, full time at my job. I'm doing the gig thing and there's a lot of gig apps. So I have this phone attached to my skull five, six days a week, sometimes seven days a week. I might be staring at the damn phone for that whole time, six, seven hours, 10 hours at a time. Um, drawing is a great way 
to hit the reset button and get away from that. And I've been doing that a lot lately. It has really been helping me, and it's just doing this kind of stuff here. I've got pages full of, you know, full of sketches, ideas. Here's, you know, just making circles, setting up. There's another one that I'm working on, you know. There's the saw. Basic operations of a chainsaw. We all know this one, right? Understanding mechanics of a saw. Air and fuel come into the carburetor, go into the case of the motor as that crank spins around. What draws them in is when your piston goes up. When your piston goes up, it creates suction, which pulls the air and fuel into here. Then the air and fuel goes up the transfer port as the piston comes back down. This this whole thing here is turning within this chamber the whole time. This is your crankshaft. I call this the hammer or your your offset. This is where your uh, connecting rod connects to the crankshaft via an offset. It's usually actually the a typical crankshaft actually looks more like see here now my drawing skills come into play because I practiced a lot of drawing as a kid. I think I think I can do this. Your your typical crankshaft actually looks like that. It's just an offset. So and then you have your your hammer or your weight. If I can draw a 3D one without making too much of a mess here. There's the end of your shaft. All this is press fit. All this comes apart at some point in the game. Um, if you want to change things. Your weights typically are shaped sort of like that. Something like that. Um. You know, it's not perfect. It's just a scribble, but a crankshaft, you're, this is the part that mounts to the saws. This turns, this goes up and down. So it's more like here's where your push rod or your, uh, your arm connects to your crankshaft. But anyway, that's technical stuff. Uh, piston goes up and down. So... When it goes up, it draws in. We're going this way. When it goes up, it draws in air and fuel. When it starts to come back down, because you got an explosion here, right, from the previous, your spark plug's always sparking. If there's no fuel up in here, you're not going to get it. This goes back. And when it goes back down, it pushes the air and fuel up through the transfers into the combustion chamber area. As this keeps turning, piston comes back up. When it's at this point, we call it TDC or top dead center, recompresses, like finishes that compression cycle. There's two cycles of compression. And it's every two strokes that we get power. So every two strokes, boom. Every two strokes, boom. Four stroke, one, two, three, four, boom. One, two, three. Well, it's one, two, three, boom. One, two, three, boom. On a four stroke motor. That's why they call it four stroke and two stroke. This is one, boom, one, boom, one, boom. Full stroke. Two strokes, two cycles. So that ignites. That ignites the fuel pushes piston back down everything goes out as exhaust All right as piston draws back down piston is recompressing everything that it sucked in last time it went up so that's just a matter of understanding i use my drawings for that um, anybody can do it. Anybody can use drawings for that. Even if you can't draw, uh, like I said, you know, 
sit down, trace your coffee cup, trace your salt shakers, start there. And then look at this. Now start doing your fills, light technique. It all starts with that technique. Fill them in. And why? Why do we want to do this? Handling technique. Watch those recent owl, owl videos that I did. The feathers that I did. Uh, this is what I'm explaining to my friend today over the uh, chats, internet, whatever you call it. Um, he's trying to learn that technique. And the one thing is, is you got to keep practicing. You, it's not that you're missing something. It's not that you're doing something wrong. It's just one day it's going to click. Like you practice it enough. Usually if you sit there and practice only that hardcore for like three days straight, you're going to get it. It's going to just click one day and you're going to, and when it clicks, it's like, holy cow. Like it's that simple. It's just like anything else, uh, technique wise, if you snowboard, if you ski, if you mountain bike, if you skateboard and you're trying to learn kick flips or, or any of these things, it's like shooting a basketball in a hoop. It just takes practice. It's just straight up raw practice. It's not a talent thing. It's not, a, Oh, you got more ability than me thing. It's you got more time practicing than me. Um, and you got more time training yourself. That's why we did all this drawing stuff. That's why we do all this. You guys might just be tuning in and seeing all of this. A lot of this is notes throughout the video that we went over. Things that we talked about. Um, things that are good to train your mind and your hands to handle your saws differently. And, and go back in my other videos, the bear, the, the basics, uh, where I'm doing like fur detail, there's, there's POV, like saw view, what it's like from the view of the saw, where my hand actually is, um, what it's like to actually do that technique. And then you see POV from my point of view up on top of my head watching the saw what i'm doing you can actually see how i hold the saw um how i let the saw do a lot of its own movements and all this all this light handling is where it begins and that's why i love doing this because you sit here in the morning you're having your coffee Uh, while you I hope I hope you you kind of get what's going on here um, if you don't go back to the beginning watch watch more of my videos that's all I can say uh, thanks for hanging out and I hope this you know hope this hour was helpful to a lot of you guys and enjoy your coffee and we'll see you later even Go to that uh, Carving Stories Facebook group. Um, I do run that group. It's a small group. Just go on Facebook, type in Carving Stories. Go on there, become a member. Post your scribbles. We'll help you. The more you guys show up, the more questions you ask, the more I'm inclined to help people. I... I get people who ask questions all the time on the YouTube channel, and that's a tough place to answer questions. People don't understand it. They're so used to easy access in this world. They think it's all going to, you know, they think that you can send them screenshots and pictures and descriptions, and they think that you can type out, you know, a thousand word paragraph and a YouTube comment section. That's all it's for. It's only for comments like, hey, do you have do you have a Facebook group where I can ask you questions? Yes, I do. Hey, do you have an email? Even an email. I got one guy who was sending me emails and 
he was asking me like 36 different questions. I was like, whoa, dude, like, please, like I've asked you before, like, don't ask me in one email. If you want to send me 36 emails, fine. Send me 36 emails or even 10 emails asking me about three different things. I will get to them when I can get to them. If you really want information, though, go to the Facebook group, Carving Stories. Ask there. I will get those notices. I can personally message people easily, and we can go back and forth. You can ask me a million questions. You can ask me 36,000 questions over Messenger, and I can help you. I can answer them all. But in an email or, or on a YouTube comment section, I can't do all that. I love you guys and I love my regulars, but please go to the Facebook group and join that. It's so much easier. And then people see it. People see the questions and they see the answers. So maybe they are learning from you now, you know, because they're learning what to ask about. You know, it's a whole community thing. And the only way that we can work as a community and make it a healthy community is is to go through the proper steps and the proper channels it's like my one buddy who i mean we message we probably message back and forth 20 30 times a day uh and if he's got questions they're they're always answered right there it's easy for him that's easy for me just go to Facebook or hit me up. I can talk to I can talk to 15 people at once via messenger. I can't do that through YouTube. I can't do that through email. Through those things, I'm only able to address one comment at a time, one person at a time. And I don't do the group chats. I refuse to do that because I think that's stupid because then Jimmy and Johnny or whoever will start having a side conversation about who's cooking what for dinner. And then it becomes like a whole thing where the next thing they're talking about is what color balloons to get for the party. Well, we're trying to talk about chainsaws. So I don't do those stupid group chats. I will not. I refuse to do those. I do one-on-one. -on -one. But I can handle 15 people at once with a thousand questions each over Messenger. Because I can go back and forth and back and forth and keep them all, keep them all entertained. So that's all I'm begging you guys. Please, please, please. If you have a lot of questions about top, here's your guys' questions. Sorry. Uh, most of the answers to your guys' questions can be found within videos in my channel and they are titled there are many videos titled specifically geared toward those subjects like if somebody says what bar are you using on that saw well there's like five or six videos that i make where i go over my setups and i go over them numerous times and numerous videos and explain them in very good detail exactly what my setups are so instead of asking that question i mean yeah you can ask that question but you can also go through my channel it helps me the more views you guys give me it's simple you know, I could tell you what bar and what setup I'm using and you could read it back and you could be like, well, what's that? What kind of deal is that? Like you could not understand a thing I'm talking about because my setups are very specific. That's why I go over it in a video. That's what I mean. Like the whole messaging thing should be done over what is called messenger. Um, emails, if you email me, please Keep it brief and to the point and keep it one subject or a couple subjects per email, no more. If you're going to ask me 10 things, break it up. 
break it down. Send me five emails, please. I would much rather. And and don't send me. Don't send me. Uh, eight paragraphs of lines to read. I'm not going to read it. I can't read all that. I can't follow all that. I'm not interested in reading all that. Keep it simple. So that's what I'm begging you guys. I, or, I, yeah, I am kind of begging at this point. Just please, you know, let's use the system for how the system is meant to work. Um, let's use Messenger to communicate. Let's go to the Facebook page, Carving Stories. Let's communicate there and check stuff out. Uh, we have a few members, a few visitors there every now and then. Um, not a lot. It was set up for my videos, for you guys' questions to get answered there. Um, watch my channel. Check my channel out for those videos that might answer your question. Uh, you can type the question, but then I would like a response like, oh yeah, I saw that video. I went through your channel and saw that video. Well, that shows me, okay, you're getting all this for free. So what's the problem with taking a little bit of that extra free time and checking out the whole channel that this guy put all of his time and effort into and none of it's free for me it's costing me a lot to do this i enjoy doing it don't get me wrong there but um the only thing that helps me is views that's what i'm pushing for if you guys view more stuff if you go to the Facebook page, use that for what it's meant for. That's what helps me as a YouTube video maker, giving you guys all this free info. Um, if you want it to be better structured, if you want my videos to improve, if you want more info on more things, uh, we need more participation because that that gets me in that groove of, okay, this is clicking. It's like doing a carving. If I feel like the carving's not coming together, I put it aside. I put it on the shelf and until I feel like working on it again. Um, same thing with videos. I took a break from videos just because I, was, I wasn't really doing much else. Yeah, I was working, but I did not feel like making videos. I was kind of feeling discouraged by a lot of things um mostly negative comments that i was getting on stuff that i didn't think i deserved negative comments for um but that you know sometimes that will discourage you and if you stuck around like i say in the owl videos if you stuck around this long to this point you're actually following you know, what I'm trying to put out there for you, 100%. You can take it or leave it. Nobody's going to be mad if you only watch five minutes of something. If it helps you, it helps you. So you get more out of it, the more you watch. That's all I can say and listening to me babble. So thanks, guys. Uh, hopefully we'll get to the shop and get it warm enough and maybe make some videos out of there next couple days. It is the weekend. Talk to you later.